happen is, is that Raman is an emission process, uh, meaning shine laser on, on your sample, a laser beam on your sample, and it, em it emits light of a different color. Um, but there's nothing to reference that to. And so the Raman spectrum of your sample is necessarily then convolved with whatever the instrument does to that, that signal. And because different vendors or different uh, manufacturers or Raman systems use different lasers, different optical components, and different detectors, um, the Raman spectra, even on very similar systems of, of a very simple molecule, can look very different. So the, the, the reality is, is that there's no standard Raman library. Um, so we set out to look at that, that problem. Um, and back then and even now, the, the best thing to do to correct um, that process is to use a very expensive, um, and I don't mean to be flipped, but very expensive calibrated light bulb. And uh, the problem uh, with the calibrated light bulbs is that not only are they expensive, they burn out, they require a lot of power, and they also require considerable expertise to interface to your experiment. And so what we've done uh, is to provide a standard or an artifact standard which allows us to, to give a customer or give a, somebody that's going to use a Raman system a piece of glass, a fluorescent piece of glass that um, transfers that irradiance calibration, that very expensive light bulb calibration to their system via this artifact. And so it's really easy for an end user to use because they just simply place a piece of glass in the same spot as their sample, uh, take a spectrum of the glass, take a spectrum of their sample, and do a little bit of math, and then they get a corrected Raman spectrum. And since we've got that now for a number of different uh, Raman systems that use different excitation lasers, it turns out there's a, a reason why you'd want to use different colors of lasers. Um, and uh, that, that is one of the disadvantages of the artifact, is a calibrated light bulb works for all systems. Uh, our glasses only work for specific laser colors. Um, but now that we have those in place, now we're starting to think about other ways of uh, developing libraries so that we can actually get back to responding to Koblenz's request that NIST provide sort of a community-supported Raman library. So this is a, a repository where we could have, and this is something we didn't talk about yesterday, but a repository where academics, uh, folks from industry, uh, government, could essentially contribute um, library specter to a common database that either NIST would um, store or we would have another federal agency store that data, but a, a common repository so that we could ultimately have this goal of a, a, a um, independent and validated Raman library for, to support these techniques. And so it would basically bring the, the technique on par then with infrared, uh, which does have uh, these common libraries and, and NMR as well. Are the vendors cooperating in this effort at all? Or? Well, they're, they're very interested in it, of course. Um, uh, certainly, for some of the vendors, uh, building a library is very expensive. Um, and so, uh, yes, uh, for a number of the vendors, it's actually a profit center for them. They, they make money on it, they support it. But on the other hand, I think they realize that um, if every vendor has to produce his own, his or her own library for each instrument, it's very costly and ultimately it's very duplicative. I mean, it, why, why measure the same thing many, many, many times? Uh, what we're also finding is that for some of the smaller vendors, and not even some of the smaller vendors, actually um, big ones, that are producing Raman systems, they'd rather have a method that would enable them to transfer a reference library to their system so that we're all working from the same data set. So, um, yeah, I think uh, there could be some pushback, but I think ultimately I think, I, I hope, that uh, we'll come to some agreement on this and, and uh, have, a, have a, a common ROM library. That's very interesting. So that light, uh, the alternative to the light bulb that you mentioned, um, what types of systems will that work with? Well, it works, currently it works with all the um, commercially available and commercially viable systems. So the laser excitation systems are the uh, 785 nanometer. That's the one, that's the most popular right now. Um, but we will have a new one coming out this year, which is for FT Raman systems. So that's uh, medium YAG lasers. So we have um, basically, I'll just list the numbers. It's 488, 514, 532. 633, 785, and 1064 standards, um, and eventually probably an 830 as well.
theme at this conference has been uh, assuring the safety of the, of the supply chain for yeah. pharmaceuticals. Do you see uh, Raman becoming the preeminent spectroscopic tool in the field, uh, you know, <laughs> given you know, it's great, simplicity. great question. I don't pick winners and losers. We we just try to help all technologies essentially compete on an even ground. Um, but having said that, I, uh, I, again, in my talk yesterday, I emphasized one of my major customers is the Department of Homeland Security, and clearly. Uh, the Raman technique is a very viable technique for both um, looking at counterfeit drugs, as we saw in some of the talks, but also for first responders, police officers, firemen, um, war fighters that are looking for unknowns in the field. And the big advantage, or a advantage of Raman, is that it requires little or no sample preparation. We can also measure the spectra, the identity of materials through common containers. So plastic containers, glass containers. So really, you don't even have to open up a, a bottle. And I think what's what we're seeing, the competing technology to that is infrared, again. And it's a special uh, type of infrared called um, attenuated total reflectance infrared. Um, it's as robust, it also requires little or no sample preparation, but it still allows, it still requires that you present the sample to the spectrometer, meaning you have to physically touch it, put it on your spectrometer. Whereas in the Raman systems, and maybe this is a, a more of an advantage for, again, the the forensics and the law, law enforcement community is that they can do standoff detection. They can literally stand back and take and acquire a spectrum and you can do it through fiber optics, you can do it remotely. So um, they both have advantages and disadvantages and I think they're both they're both complementary techniques, both in